Hey, 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 Divas, you're listening to our daily devotion for the High Stepping for Health and Self-Love Sisterhood Challenge for the Divas of Fit, Fine, and Fabulous. And I am your host, Nicole Coach Twy Twyman, and I'll be sharing 10 to 15 minute devotions every day during the month of September. Our goal is to motivate black and brown women to move their bodies and practice self-love all month long. So let's get started, sis. Hey, divas, we did it, sis. We made it to the halfway mark of our High Stepper for Health Step Timber Challenge. And I am so, so, so proud of you. And if you are listening to the sound of my voice, you have truly accomplished with many desire to do, but don't have the consistency and dedication to do it. But here you are crushing it, queen. So welcome, welcome, welcome to day 14 of our High Step for Health journey together as a sisterhood. We are continuing on with exploring the stories of the Bible that teach us about resisting food temptation. So you ready for the ready, ready, sis? <laughs> All right. You know, since today marks a significant milestone in our journey, we are turning in and turning towards the story of Jesus and how the devil tempted him in the wilderness. And let's see how he handled it, boo. Okay. But first, let's review today's affirmation together. I recognize that true sustenance comes from spiritual nourishment and aligning with God's will. I prioritize higher values over momentary desires. All right, affirmation is doing what it's due. Now let's get into the story of Jesus's temptation, which is found in Matthew chapter four, verses one through four. And the message translation reads, Next, Jesus was taken into the wild by the spirit for the test. The devil was ready to give it. Jesus prepared for the test by fasting 40 days and 40 nights. That left him, of course, in a state of extreme hunger, which the devil took full advantage of in his first test. Since you are God's son, speak the word that will turn these stones into loaves of bread. Jesus answered by quoting Deuteronomy. It takes more than bread to stay alive. It takes a steady stream of words from God's mouth. All right. Jesus was taken into the wilderness for a spiritual test, sis. And this is often referred to as the temptation of Jesus or the 40 days in the wilderness as described in uh, the New Testament of the Bible. Now, we just read it here in Matthew, but it also shows up in Mark and it also shows up in Luke. And I just want to take a moment to talk about just a couple of reasons uh, that that has symbolic meanings kind of associated with this whole event. So allow me to um, to share. So there was some spiritual preparation that was going on during this time. So before the beginning of his public ministry, That is when Jesus spent time in the wilderness. He was literally preparing himself spiritually before his public ministry launched. This period of testing served as a time of intense prayer, fasting, and communion with God. It allowed him to focus on his mission and strengthen his spiritual resolve. Just like Jesus says, we need to spiritually prepare for any big changes we are making in our lives. So if you are starting a new job, moving to a new city, or how about even starting a new diet, starting a new workout routine, and you just can't seem to stick with it, I implore you to try again. But this time, try it with God. Go to God first, sis. Let him help you lay the plans for your diet. Lay the plans for your meal plan. Lay the plans for your workout routine. Let him help you lay those plans. Another area that I want to kind of just highlight is the spiritual warfare that was going on in this this particular uh, space. The wilderness experience also kind of illustrates the concept of that spiritual warfare, right? So Satan in the biblical account is depicted as a tempter who seeks to lead Jesus astray. 
girl, and Lord knows the devil is out here stu- still doing what he do, <laughs> right? He is not creative, but he is very consistent. He is still a tempter, is he not? Jesus' resistance to this temptation, to the tempter, symbolizes his triumph over evil and his authority over spiritual forces. As we've said many, many times already this month, use God's great power to overthrow the devil, sis. Jesus did it. Okay. And you may be like, Twy, but I ain't Jesus. <laughs> not Jesus. But sis, you might not be Jesus, but if you're a believer, don't you believe that he resides in you? And don't you believe that he resides in you as representative by the Holy Spirit? And so since if you believe that the Holy Spirit lives in you, you have to also believe that that same Holy Spirit has that same power. Since you just got to use it. You just got to use it. He's in you. You have that power. There's going to be that spiritual warfare that's going to happen, even though you're thinking, oh my, this is about physical food. This is about food that I can see and taste and, and feel go through my body. But it's bigger than that. It is a spiritual warfare that is happening out there as it relates to your consistency, your dedication to your values, your dedication to your health. The devil doesn't want you to be healthy for the Lord. He does not. So I need you to fight this spiritual warfare using the Holy Spirit that lives in you. You got this, sis. The other thing I want to highlight about this this, uh, story is the quoting of scripture. In his responses to Satan, Jesus quoted passages from the Hebrew scriptures. He was out here with the Old Testament on him. All right. So for me, this underscores the importance of scripture and resisting temptation. And it literally serves as an example for believers to use God's word as a source of strength and guidance, not just reading the word, just to read the word, but we need to use it as our source, right? Yes, one thing I hope, one thing I hope for as we move through the second half of this month is that you begin to build an arsenal of scripture references and arsenal affirmations that will help you fight back, right? Too many times the the devil throws darts at us and you just cave in, sis. Too many times the devil is out here tempting you. And you just give in, you like, oh, I can't handle it. You know, that happens way too many times. That's exactly how he wants you to respond to. But I'm gonna need you to fight back with scripture, sis. I'm gonna need you to fight back with affirmation, sis. I'm gonna need you to fight back with mantras. I'm gonna need you to fight back with habits and routines so strong that the devil's voice is drowned out by all the positivity that you're feeding yourself. Since you don't have to cave in to just to something you feel or something you may even hear in your head or the voices that are coming from friends and stuff around you, you don't have to fall into that. You can fight back using your own values. So as we wrap up today's devotion, I want us to realize Jesus's time in the wilderness for a spiritual test was a pivotal moment in his life and in his ministry. In his ministry. One of my main takeaways, and I hope maybe is yours from this story, is how Jesus emphasized that true sustenance comes not from the physical food, but from the spiritual nourishment found in God's word. And for me, and for me, and Fit, Fine, and Fabulous, and all the things that we do, this is why. This is why we say that your mindset is the foundation to all health because your mindset is set, right, by what you feed yourself. I'm talking in terms of what you're reading, what you're watching, what you're seeing, what you're hearing, right? So what you're feeding, not just your mouth, but all of those things matter as it relates to your spiritual nourishment and your mindset has to be right in order for you to win, my friends. So you could have a meal plan, you could have the workouts, you could have all the, the, the best laid plans, but if your mind's not right, 
then you won't win, my friend. So get and stay in the word so you can fight back against the devil's attacks. You have all the power. Just use it. So before we close, let's go ahead and read our affirmation today. I recognize that true sustenance comes from spiritual nourishment and aligning with God's will. I prioritize higher values over momentary desires. Let's also close our devotion with prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, as we reflect on Jesus' temptation in the wilderness, we are reminded of his steadfastness, his steadfastness in resisting the allure of turning stones into bread for his own personal gratification. He prioritized spiritual nourishment and aligned his choices with your divine will. Grant us the wisdom to recognize that our sustenance goes beyond physical food and encompasses the spiritual nourishment found in your word and your guidance and the people that you send into our lives to speak into us. Help us resist the temptation of immediate gratification and prioritize higher values on our journey towards health and self-love. It is in your magnificent name that we pray, Jesus. Let all the divas say, amen, amen, amen. May this affirmation and prayer inspire you to prioritize spiritual nourishment and align your choices with higher values as you continue your journey towards health and self-love this September. Congratulations on listening to your 14th devotion while you are high-stepping for your health 14 days in a row, sis. Join me tomorrow as we kick off our second half of the month. Until then, divas, have a fit, fine, and fabulous day. Hey guys, thanks for listening to our fit, fine, and fabulous devotion today. We're so glad that you're here with us. If you've completed all of your steps for the day, make sure you post your selfie in our fit, fine, and fabulous Facebook group and mark this lesson complete in our app. If you're not a part of this challenge but want free motivation, just join us in our Facebook group, Fit, Fine, and Fabulous. That's Fit, Fine with a Y, F-Y-M-E, Fabulous. Or follow us on Instagram at fit underscore fine underscore fab. Can't wait to connect with you.